Could a leaky gut be the cause of your chronic pain? Well, this has been talked about for a long time. And indeed, in the last few decades, the research around microbiome and the presence of a leaky gut is now being recognized as something that is contributory to pain management. How is that possible? What exactly is a leaky gut? And why is that relevant, especially for chronic pain? Indeed, especially in some conditions like fibromyalgia, where it is shown that up to 70% of patients with fibromyalgia do have something called irritable bowel syndrome. And in them, it is thought that leaky gut could be a major mechanism that's responsible for the pain of irritable bowel and probably even for some of the symptoms. But for this, we need to take again a step back and actually say, what are the factors that can contribute to leaky gut and what does that actually mean in real terms? Well, first of all, let's understand the anatomy of the intestine as it were. Now, in another video, I talked about the fact that the intestine itself, and by this, I mean the entire lining from the mouth right to the back passage, but certainly in the area once you kind of swallowed. So the food pipe all the way down to the large intestine is all going to be just one single cell lining thick. Now this single cell lining thick is very tight, just right next to each other, and there is no gap between them at all. There is, however, the potential for some gaps to happen so that water can come in quickly or the cells can release some fluid into the lumen, into the sort of inner pipe of the gut. And this is useful because when you want to flush out some food poisoning that has happened and you've got some really bad bacteria there, you need to be flushing out, you need to have a, a diarrheal episode, you need water to enter it quickly. So you do have these gap junctions between the single cell lining of the gut. Okay, but above this lining of the gut, there's another layer which is essentially like a mucus layer. This is just a thin layer that is present above the entire gut lining of the cells. And this is where all the bacteria are present all the time. This is a combination of the good and the bad bacteria as well. And this combination of the good and the bad bacteria essentially creates an ecosystem within the inner lining of the gut. And this inner lining of the gut and the ecosystem of all these microorganisms, and by microorganisms, I mean bacteria, I mean viruses, I mean parasites, anything that is in that layer is going to be, along with its genetic material that it has, is going to be establishing a communication and a crosstalk with our immune system. And indeed, it's this combination and constant crosstalk that is keeping our immune system informed about what's happening within the ecosystem of the gut. So why did I explain all of this stuff? Understanding this ecosystem is very important because like any ecosystem, it can get disturbed. It can get imbalanced. It can get out of whack wherein sometimes you may have an excess of bad bacteria that is overwhelming the good bacteria. This is what happens when you have food poisoning, when you have something bad, effectively you have introduced a new population of bad bacteria or bad microorganisms or a viral diarrhea and that is going to change the local ecosystem. It can also affect the mucin layer. Now, the more the mucin or the mucus layer is changed or reduced, the cells which are at the bottom of the mucin layer get exposed to this bad microorganisms. And this disturbance of the local ecosystem, this imbalance that can occur is what's called dysbiosis. Now, dysbiosis is very critical for the generation of many health problems, including chronic pain. Because once you have something that's affected the thickness of the mucus layer, that means the cells are getting exposed to all these microorganisms. Indeed, they may be exposed to the food stuff as well. They may be exposed to various chemicals that come in the food stuff. 
and that is where it becomes unpredictable on how these cells will react. And if you have a change in your diversity of your good versus bad microorganisms, that also becomes another risk factor for your mucin layer function and the cells can get impacted. The combination of all of this, the reduction in the mucin layer, the change in the diversity, the so-called dysbiosis picture is going to activate the cells and the immune system over there. And this combination of activation of the immune system and dysbiosis can cause the gap junctions to open, can cause the space between the cells to open, sometimes even the cells to be inflamed, and this is what is popularly called as leaky gut. Now, it's not a term that researchers often like very much, but it is something that's prevalent in the popular literature. So I'm not going to change that too much. But this disturbance and this leaky gut can become a problem because once you have the gap separating out, then chemicals that are formed in the gut before they are treated or taken care of by the good microorganisms, they can find their way to the gap junction, they can enter between the gaps and they can counter the circulation. They may even enter the bloodstream directly or certainly they will activate the immune system in a great amount. When that immune system is activated, it has two sequences. One consequence is that it can activate the inflammatory cells within the fat tissue that's around the gut and that inflammatory Chemicals are called adipokines, which are going to prolong the inflammation further. Or the immune system, once it's activated, is going to activate the nervous system in the gut. And one of the big players in the nervous system in the gut is the vagus nerve. And in reality, one of the researchers called John Cryan from Ireland actually said that whatever happens in vagus doesn't stay there. And that means that the vagus nerve, as you might know, is actually taking a whole lot of information from the gut to the brain. And so this information about the dysbiosis, about the change in the gap junctions, about the activation of the immune system is all taken by the vagus nerve to various parts of the brain. And if the nervous system is already sensitized, then this becomes the trigger for the nervous system in the spinal cord and in the brain to then fire up and become much more activated. And this is effectively what we call as central sensitization. So leaky gut by a very long way can cause a sensitization of the nervous system. And in some people, it's been thought to be responsible for the worsening of their chronic pain or sometimes the initiation and maintenance of their chronic pain. And you can see that this is a reversible process because if you can restore the gap junctions, if you can restore the mucus layer, then that is where you get the opportunity for this irritable bowel or leaky gut like symptoms to actually get better. So that leads me to the last part of this video is what might be the factors that can actually help build back the mucus layer. One is more fiber, which is again a way of looking at nutrition. The second is to look at the kind of drugs because some drugs like statins, other drugs like opioids, some of the anti-inflammatories, they all can cause a reduction in the thickness of the mucus layer or they can affect the diversity of the microbiome. So looking at whether you really need some of these drugs that you're taking, whether you can reduce some of the opioids or the anti-inflammatories, all of that can help in improving the mucus layer and reducing that probability of a leaky gut. I hope this video has been helpful in the way we've sort of broken down what causes leaky gut, what can you do from the perspective of nutrition to improve it? And ultimately, this is about looking at a whole food, predominantly plant-based approach, reducing the pro-inflammatory products, increasing the anti-inflammatory products, and that can all benefit in reducing the risk of leaky gut. And hopefully, that can have a big impact on your chronic pain management. 
I hope you found this video useful. I shall see you in the next one. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found this of value. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos on the understanding of pain science and lifestyle medicine.